G'day everyone, welcome to the How To Halo Reach ODST web series. This is of course tutorial part 5. My name is Andrew DFT and of course in today's tutorial we're going to be focusing on how to build the ODST shoulder piece. It's a very iconic piece within the uh, overall design. It has existed in both the Halo 3 ODST and the Reach design itself. So by the end of the tutorial you should have it looking like this. A nice, nice well designed shoulder piece that will sit of course on your shoulder perfectly. Can't really reach around and put it on myself at the moment and that way your whole costume will start to look quite significant but like i said this is a rather iconic design piece and to get it designed perfectly it does require a lot of layers that's why if i was to rate it well i will rate it um, the difficulty level will be around a six out of ten this is the hardest piece on the costume besides the gauntlet so we are going to have to pay quite a bit of attention to how the actual tutorial uh, process goes and you will have to uh, really uh, take into account when you're actually building it the way that the foam bends but not impossible so enough talk let's jump straight into it all right so to kick things off go ahead and print out the three templates needed for this tutorial you've got the top section the lower section and then what would be considered the hinge I guess once you've done that cut them out of the uh, a4 piece of paper and then we'll go ahead and transfer them onto the foam all preliminary steps but they've been the exact same steps you've done in the previous tutorials once we've got it transferred out on the EVA foam this top section first we're gonna go ahead and start trimming some of these edges these edges are gonna be needed trimmed so that way we can uh, start to bind it all together so what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab the template which we just used and we're gonna cut it out into these four different sections once we've got the four sections cut out we can start transferring the lines onto the material. This is going to be where the uh, hinge mark, or sorry, the folding lines will um, end up being. So you can transfer those three lines as seen on screen. And we're going to grab a nice sharp craft blade and we're actually going to bevel into these. Now I highly recommend you do have a sharp blade. You should really be having a nice sharp blade for every episode, if not changing twice in that episode. We're going to go ahead and cut out these sections here. Pretty much what we do on all the foam, which is beveling, but we're beveling pretty much on a flat surface rather than onto a 45 degree angle. So cutting in on both sides, this is going to allow the foam to really bend over and give us a nice kind of edge, but not going all the way through the foam because that would uh, appear a bit unusual. Now what we can do is do the 45 degree beveling that we're used to and cut out these two lines um, here. Now you will have to do it on the other side. I will show you exactly what sides I am cutting into. These four pointed on the screen. So that way these edges will really come together nice and flush um, once we heat it up and we uh, glue it together. So once you've done that, then we can start heating up the phone. Give it quite a nice heat of it. We don't want it to really bend in like a circle frame. We kind of just want it to bend on that flat hinge so it should be kind of like a nice 45 degree actually no that's, that's wrong it's more like a, a 60 degree angle but you can see it's forming that really nice kind of clean edge and what we can do is we can go ahead and do it on all these sides so they all should slowly start bringing together um, it's very easy to do and you shouldn't have any major problems now what you can do is you can reheat this top section just to make sure it's a bit more malleable and then bend it into position and then go ahead and glue in all these individual lines. Do try and get them as flush as possible because you these are going to be crevices and uh, seams that you will see no matter what but it all depends on how, uh, how well you're going to see them is uh, all dependent on how well you glue them together. But in the end you can of course uh, cover them up with a material. Moving on, so we're going to go ahead and grab the three templates that we initially cut out and we're going to start transferring on these perimeter lines. So all you need to do is uh, cut out the edges which are drawn out on the templates and slowly start transferring them on to the EVA foam design itself. It shouldn't be too difficult, you're pretty much just laying them on top and tracing around. Right, once you've done that we can go ahead and start scoring this thing. So. Of course, you've done that previously, you just go through with a craft blade and then you heat it up and the line should really start popping out. I didn't show the full process because you've done it a lot of times now, I'm, I'm assuming it's nailed into your brain by now. Now for the lower section. So this one is going to follow pretty much the exact same process that we just did for the top half, just in a different design. So go ahead and transfer the design, the template, onto the foam itself and then we can start transferring the 
uh, fold lines onto the back of the uh, material. So of course you can go ahead and cut out the template again into these three individual sections and then like we did on the top one, place it on the back and draw out those lines as needed. Once we've got those lines of course we're going to go ahead and cut those negative folding lines. So cutting in one side and coming in on the other but rather than coming in on both sides we're only going to need to do the one um, we did the two on the top section but for this one it, we don't need that steep of a, a fold line so just do the one side and it should be enough to just glue it together and have it sit in that nice uh, that nice shape to bring out a larger kind of 3D design look, what we're going to do is we're going to cut out this extra little wing template and transfer it onto the material. We're going to give it a bit more of a 3D depth and feel like we have done with the majority of the other pieces previously. It just gives it a whole nicer overlook and the actual design itself has this kind of aesthetic so we are trying to match it of course so once we've cut it out just glue it back into position but with a slight depth so it gives it a nice terraced effect which I always love doing this kind of uh, unique technique um, because it does make the designs look a whole lot better from a distance and especially when you paint it up it can look rather nice. So as we're doing on screen we're cutting out this extra piece needed for this middle section and then you can actually cut off the edges where the lines have been marked. This is going to become a new raised piece that we're going to actually cut out of a new piece of EVA foam and then we're going to place on top. But before we place it on top we are going to cut some kind of nice grooves slash edges just to give it a nicer a nicer look rather than having it this blocky square piece. So what you need to do is just trace out these three individual perimeter lines. Um, you can just freehand them, uh, just copy what's on the screen and then we're going to go and bevel the edges. Now you don't want to cut all the way through the foam, maybe cut halfway and halfway just so it has a nice lip and like I said before it doesn't remain a really blocky looking shape. Once you've done that of course we can go ahead and grab our heat gun and we can heat this up just to make all the curves kind of bend over so it's not like a, a fresh carved piece of foam. It will uh, heat up those fibers and really bring in the density of the foam and make it look better. So once we've done that we can start working on the hinge. This section is going to require a few little uh, very sharp techniques for you guys to learn. It's pretty much what you've done before just on a smaller scale. So what we're going to do is transfer the template onto the foam and then we're going to cut out where the lines are marked on the template itself. We're going to draw those lines then onto the foam because we're going to be cutting this piece up into many different forms. What we can do is once we've transferred all those lines over is we're going to actually cut this whole piece out of the foam. Then what you're going to do is actually cut off these wings, so it should be all like that. Now a key piece is we've got a top longer section and a shorter bottom section. Those will be key pieces to uh, identify going forward. So what we can do is then turn this middle section over, cut a seam line down the middle, fold it over like you, I've just done on screen, and we're going to draw out this nice little line pretty much halfway, or maybe three quarters of the way through up to the top. Then we can bevel it out just so it's coming away like way those excess uh, pieces because what we're going to do is we're actually going to glue those wing sections back but on a nice terraced effect to give it like a, a more rounded design and something quite unique. This isn't exactly how the hinge is done on the actual ODST but to keep it all using EVA foam I found out this was actually a cool little way to do it. So what you can do is grab the top longer wing section and cut out a lower hinge piece um, which I just showed before and then you're going to go ahead and glue them into section. Now you will notice there's a nice little uh, terraced level there. This creates a nice little overall design and you can then go ahead and glue everything back into position. Now what you're going to notice of course you've got this little edge where it's not joining. What we can do is we can put some hot glue there and we can actually bend it into position so that it does fit. Now before you start gluing anything anywhere we're going to cut out this little beveled edge into exactly where I'm showing on screen. This is going to allow that hinge to fit in properly and not have any obstruction or the foam getting in the way. So once you've cut that nice little beveled slope inward we can then start progressing. Now you will notice that th I have this uh, uh, lower section that has this top bracket piece. Now we can actually cut that out. The only reason I didn't do it earlier is because I didn't want to confuse people. So you can cut that section out and this is going to allow pretty much where the hinge will slide in and it will create a nice little transition between that lower section and the top. So once you've completely cut that out, 
we're going to go ahead and mark out some lines on the hinge piece so that we know exactly where to glue it. Now because I don't have any exact measurements, I'd say maybe about an inch in on this piece, mark a nice little line on both sides like I've done on screen, and then put some hot glue there. What you can do is you can slowly start gluing both sections, the top and the bottom together, and it should hold quite nicely. Once we've done that, uh, make sure the glue is completely set before progressing because we don't want it to be lopsided. You're going to then put the hinge piece through the uh, two sections and mark out where exactly the top and the bottom meet. Then put some glue there and then simply just put it back into position and hold it until it dries. But that pretty much wraps up the shoulder piece for this ODST armor. So that's it. Hopefully you guys managed to follow along and like I did say, it is quite a long and a very difficult process, but not an impossible one by any means. So, hopefully you guys can uh, follow through that tutorial and have this exact same outcome for you guys as well. Now remember, you do need to build two, unless you want to customize and change it so you can have one looking like this and another one maybe a different kind of design from the ODST uh, um, classes. But that is up to you and your personal decision. And like I always am pushing, go for it, make your own designs unique and personalize them as much as you can because that's what's going to really push your final costume in the end. But thank you very much for watching. I'll of course join you in episode 6 when we go ahead and do the ODST gauntlets. But until then, good luck with the shoulders and I'll catch you guys later.